Hello students, uh, my name is Santosh Kumar and I am the course instructor for Machining Sciences and Tool Design. We are discussing module number one that is uh, Metal Cutting Theory and Dynamometry. So in this uh, video, we will discuss about uh, slip line field analysis. <music> So the slip lines uh, uh, are the planes of maximum shear. Uh, the slip plane is the where the shearing will happen. This is where maximum shearing uh, shear is present. So which is oriented at 45 degrees uh, to the axis of principal stresses. Uh, as you know, the maximum and uh, minimum slip lines are orthogonal and are uh, oriented at 45 and 135 degree. Uh, slip line field theory is based on the analysis of deformation field. So deformation uh, is particularly happening in a certain field. That field we are calling it as a slip line field. So we are doing analysis on this. So that is what we call it as a slip line field analysis. So that is uh, both geometrically and self-consistent, geometrically self-consistent and uh, statistically admissible. Uh, slip line field analysis is a graphical approach. So we develop a grid uh, that is slip line field uh, depend upon the determination of plastic flow pattern in the forming material. So slip line field solutions provide valuable insights uh, that is compared to other uh, analytical approach uh, slip line field solutions provide valuable insights into the nature of material flow in the cutting process and the effect of friction at the grain work piece interface. So uh, there, is, there, is a, there was an attempt made uh, to find to generate the experimental flow fields uh, to model an appropriate uh, slip line field. So experimental flow fields were obtained by uh, the magnified motion pictures of grids on the side of the chip using with a glass plate. So experimental based uh, slip line field was then altered. It is fine. It was fine tuned to get until the boundary conditions of velocity and force were satisfied. So this uh, SLF that is slip line field uh, experimental generated uh, slip line field was then used to determine the shear angle cutting forces, power and temperature using a value of flow stress for the work material that was a constant and uh, independent of hydrostatic stress. So here we, we use uh, hydrostatic stress, uh, plane, st uh, plane strain uh, and also uh, deuteric stress terms which you should be uh, knowing. So this is the slip line field. So here you can see there is only a single line here. So there is only one plane where uh, slip is occurring. So usually it will not happen. So if it is in real condition, it will not happen like this. So it can be a pie shape would like this or an irregular shape like this. Uh, so and the shapes which you are shown here. Uh, so this is a slip field. Uh, so this slip field will not may not be regular shape also. So here it is a flat. Uh, it is a straight lines, whereas it can be a curvy linear uh, grid lines also. So these are the slip line, different types of slip line. Uh, field. So computer uh, was now was used to construct the slip line fields consistent with the experimental flow fields. So instead that is uh, you can use a computer to get the grid. Uh, initially modeling was uh, for low cutting speeds where uh, the effect of strain rate and temperature on flow stress would be ignored. So later uh, strain hardening and strain effects were introduced that give more realistic results for higher cutting speeds. Uh, usual assumptions which we make in uh, slip line field analysis are this. Uh, we, as a regular assumption, uh, we make uh, the metal is isotropic and homogeneous. Uh, along with this, uh, we make certain other assumptions like uh, the material is uh, perfectly plastic and then uh, deformation is on plane strain. So you should be knowing what is plane strain. So here in this uh, plane strain, we only consider uh, strain in uh, two directions. Uh, in the third direction, it is uh, we consider it is zero. So that is uh, matrix will be of this form. So in a, only in X and Y direction and in Z direction, it is uh, zero. So this is the two, only two terms which you use. So this is what a uh, plane st uh, strain means. Uh, the deformation, whatever happens, it, uh, we assume that it happens only in a plane strain. So that is in only in two directions. So the effects of temperature, strain rates and time are not considered uh, in slip line field analysis. So there is a constant shear stress at the interfacial, interfacial boundary. Uh, usually either a frictionless condition uh, is assumed or a sticking uh, friction is assumed.
So what is the methodology to do the slip line field analysis uh, is, is typed in the following steps. First, uh, we establish the differential equations uh, in terms of mean stress and deuteric stress. Uh, deuteric stress is, uh, is the shear stress uh, which is happening for plane strain deformation are formulated. First, we find what is the mean stress and deuteric stress that is shear stress and then we find the differential equations of it and then uh, this differential equation is solved. So the slip line is constructed uh, graphically out of orthogonal maximum shear line uh, shear lines uh, maximum and minimum shear lines which we that is the grid uh, which we obtained. Uh, then uh, from known stress at the same point integral cost constants are determined from this cutting load can be found. So the basis of slip line field analysis is the fact that general state of stress on a solid in a plane strain deformation can be represented by two type of stresses. So one is a main mean stress, uh, other one is a pure shear stress. Pure shear stress is that in deuteric stress. So for plane strain conditions, uh, we find the mean stress uh, that is uh, that will be average of uh, other two stresses. And the, for the plane strain condition, uh, it is the Tresca criteria that is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 will be equal to by 2 will be equal to tau. Uh, I am sorry about the slide. Uh, for plane strain deformation, we obtain this uh, differential equations, the, uh, the uh, mean stress and deviatoric stress in the form of a differential equation as shown here. So then these uh, differential equations are converted into algebraic equations uh, along with the changed coordinate systems. Uh, the namely the along the two direction of maximum shear then they can be solved subjected to boundary conditions. So two differential equation transformed in directions uh, that is uh, where the maximum shear happens that is alpha and beta. So from x y directions to alpha and beta direction. So here the directions alpha and beta are called slip lines. So we find uh, what is the stresses on the slip lines. So using the stresses on x and y direction that is using mean stress and deviatoric stress uh, we convert it into differential form then we convert it into algebraic form along with the changing the directions we find what is the uh, stresses in the slip planes like uh, alpha and beta. So here is the example of it here in x and y direction you have sigma x and sigma y. So we find what is the uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2 and also we find what is uh, uh, mean stress and deviatoric stress and we change the direction inclination so that it is inclined with the slip line. So it may not be a straight lines like this it can be a curvilinear also like this. So here you can see uh, this is x and y and uh, it is uh, converted at an angle like uh, from the xy directions to uh, alpha and beta directions. So here you can see this is how the conversion is made onto the slip line. We are matching uh, this inclination with the slip line inclination. So that is how we can find what is the stress on the slip line uh, using the stresses on x and y directions. So this is about uh, slip line field analysis. Uh, we will end this video here.